Welcome everyone, Farmer Cobb here. This is going to be a guide to the new production facility that comes with the premium expansion in addition, the Preserved Food Factory. So here we are taking a look at that. If you have not ordered the premium expansion or edition yet, uh, down below in the description, um, you can go and check that out. And if you want to know the difference, the expansion is if you already own Farming Simulator 22, you just want to get the expansion. If you already own or, or if you don't own the game at all, you want to get the edition because it comes with all of the DLCs so far, plus the game and the premium package. So it's a very good deal there. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look here. So we are on Zalanka, and this is located up here. This is where this uh, factory is located. So it's built into the map on here. If you have premium selected, you can use this factory on any map. If you go into production chains in the build mode, if you have it selected, you can place more preserved food factories. Now, obviously, this one's a lot larger than this little guy here. Um, so one thing I want to note with that as well, when we have this factory here, so you have inputs and outputs. So the wrench is right here for us to purchase it. So if I go up here, I can purchase it for $110,000. No big deal. Now, if I go around the side here, this is where we're going to put our inputs in. And then our outputs are actually going to come out way back over here, right here on this checker area. Now, if we use the one that is placeable, it still does the same thing. However, you can see that on the front of it here, we have the um, input section there. And on the back is going to be that checkered area. And you can see the wrench right there. So I just want you to be aware that this is a little bit different. Same cost, does the same thing. Production is all the same, except that, yeah, it's just a little bit different compared to the one that's placed on the map. So just be aware of that. But let's go ahead and take a look here. So if we hop back into that production menu, this is going to do preserved food, carrots, parsnips, and beetroot. So if you don't know anything about production chains, we'll go over that first. So I'm going to go ahead and deactivate these all right now. Oops, deactivate them. Um, and so down here again, you can hit activate if they're deactivated. Uh, right now they say inactive because they're not running. If you activate them, they'll say running. Once they run out of materials, the same material is missing. We haven't put anything in here yet, so that makes sense for that. Now, each one of these is a different recipe. So you can see for the preserved food carrots, we have 100 carrots to 60 carrots uh, or preserved carrots. We have 100 tarsips, uh, God, parsnips, not tarsnips. I don't know what a tarsnip is. 100 parsnips to 60 preserved parsnips. Beetroots, you have 100 beetroots to um, 60 preserved food beetroots. So how these recipes work, it is 100 liters of carrots to get you 60 liters of preserved carrots. That's how all of these recipes are. Now, up here, we have some more information. Cycles per month. So what this is going to say, this number says that this is going to happen 240 times per one month. So if you have your game set to one day per month, this will happen 240 times every day. If you have it set to 10 days per month or whatever the case may be, it'll divide that uh, or this number by um, how many days are in the month. And then it'll do this that divided number per day on that. So just be aware of that. Production cost, same thing. It's going to take that and divide it out over the course of the days per month and bill you every day for it. Um, so just be aware of that. Now, on the right-hand side, we have the incoming material. So carrots, parsnips, and red beets. So these are how many liters we have in the storage for this facility. And then down here at the bottom, we have our three outputs and how many liters we have in this facility. So down here at the bottom, it says change output mode. So for food carrots right here, we have it set to storing. Well, they're all set to storing now. Storing is going to slowly fill up this bar until there's enough in here to produce one pallet. Then a pallet will spawn in that checkered area that I showed you earlier. And then it'll keep doing that until there's no room for pallets and then continue to fill up. If I change it to selling, as things are produced, it's going to automatically sell them off to the best price. However, you are going to take a 40% cut of that. So it's going to reduce your what you're actually making by 40%. And that's why I actually don't recommend doing that. Then if we move to the next one, which is distributing, what that's going to do is it's going to hold all the products in here until there's another factory that requires these products. So there are no current factories that I'm aware of modded or not that will take any of these as an input. But if there were, it would take any of these if they were set to distributing and put them into the incoming materials of whatever factory required them. So otherwise, if you just have it set to distributing, it's just going to fill this up and not spawn any pallets and just not do anything. But we're going to leave them on storing for now. So let's get some products in here. Again, we know we need to put them in this grate right here. So I have a tractor full of red beets right here. So I'm gonna drive these over there. I'm gonna put the red beets in. And then I'm also gonna put some tars or parsnips. Good Lord, I don't know why I wanna say parsnips. I'm just making up vegetables now, but we're gonna go ahead and put these guys in here just like that. And then I am gonna go ahead and put some carrots and um, some parsnips in there as well. So I'll bring you guys back in. As soon as I get those done, I'll just put a quick cut in here. All right, so I'm getting the last bit of our parsnips put in there. I've already put the other products in there and we're good. I'm gonna just pull this out of the way just so it's off to the side here. It's not really gonna be our way anyways, but that's fine. We'll just move it over there so we know it's not. Now, if we go up to the building and see down there bottom right hand corner, it shows kind of our inputs outputs there. If I go onto the wrench or into the production menu here, it shows all these inputs in here. So 
Um, and after this, we're gonna go ahead and produce, we're gonna produce these. So I'm gonna activate all these guys here so that way they start producing products. So we can take a look at the pallets. After that, I'm gonna take a look at the profitability. So I'm gonna let you guys know if it's actually worth it to put your products in here, or should you just sell your beets, parsnips and carrots separately to make money that way. So we will go over that, but let's run over here to where our output is. And we're gonna start fast forwarding some time until we get some outputs. You can see down there, it is producing quite fast. I think it's gonna be 2,000 liter pallets. Most of the productions have been about 2,000 liter pallets. So we'll see here shortly. Yep, it looks like that's gonna be the case. So I'll slow it back down. So what we have, 2,000 liter pallets of each of these guys. You're not gonna be able to lift them yourself. I have super strength on, that's why I can lift them. But you can see they look great. Nice little pallets of some preserved items. So pretty sweet. So there you go, that's the pallets it's gonna produce. Now I'm gonna do some math real quick just to see if it's actually worth it for us to use this factory or should we just sell off our stuff separately? So I'm gonna do all that math and get that figured out and then I'll bring you guys back in here very shortly. All right, so taking a look at it, it's definitely worth it to do it, which makes sense. I'm glad they did the math on this. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely worth it for this. So in terms of everything, um, I'm going to put a chart up on your screen in a second. Um, what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at if you were to, instead of putting, again, putting your carrots, parsnips, and red beets into this factory, would it be better if you just sold them separately? Um, so that's the thing we're looking at. Now, again, I can't include the cost of the factory because that's a one-time purchase, so just make sure you're weighing that into your decision. But Because um, if you're only going to do it for a little bit, then it's probably not worth it. But if you are going to do it uh, long-term, um, this is definitely worth it, I think. So the chart on your screen right now, that has on the left-hand side the recipe we're looking at. So it has preserved carrots, preserved parsnips, and preserved red beets. Then it has the input cost, which is basically instead of putting 100 liters, that's what the recipes require. So this is per cycle, by the way. Each one of these lines is per cycle. Um, so instead of putting in the per cycle amount of carrots, parsnips, or red beets, that's what you'd get if you sold them separately. Then we have the output. So that's when you're taking your, your 60 liters of whatever the preserved food is. So that's how much is in a cycle. So if you're taking that preserved food and selling it at the best price, um, that is what you're gonna make off of each output per cycle. Then the profit on the right-hand side is gonna be how much you're making per cycle. And again, these guys, if you provide them enough resources, um, they're gonna produce, they're gonna do 240 cycles of uh, whatever the product is per, uh, per month. So for example, the red beets, which are the most profitable per cycle, if we multiply that by 240, we're getting about $14,765 profit uh, per month, which is really good. So these are all really well worth it as long as you can put the stuff in there and get it all taken care of. And this also does include the production cost. So what I mean by that is includes how much it costs to produce every month. So that production value or that production fee uh, to keep maintaining these facilities, that is included in that cost. So there you guys go. That shows you that these are definitely worthwhile factories in the premium pack. Um, so there you go. Make sure you guys check out the other videos I have on all the factories out um, and yeah, enjoy those. But there you guys go. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.